Hi there and welcome to another tech video here on my channel. It's me and Bumlingen who's here today. Yes, hello. Uh, this video will be related to my live streams on YouTube. Uh, how I set them up and uh, what kind of program and settings I am using. I think that can be, I hope that can be interesting for some. So, as always, thanks for watching. Let's go! Okay. There are already plenty of guides of both setting up live streams and dialing in the best values in the streaming software on YouTube. And this is not going to be another guide. This is not the most in-depth tutorial in any way about the subject. The main focus are just to show off how I do it and briefly talk about what setting I use. There are links in the description to the programs mentioned in the video if someone wants to take a closer look at them. And as always, if you got any questions please make a comment below and I will gladly share my different program settings. Feel free to watch my other tech videos also here on my channel as well. The first thing I do both when just racing and doing my streams is starting up the program Sim Commander from Sim Experience. This program can do many things and I use it as it holds the software that controls my butt kicker that I got vibrating under my seat. Many games are supported and each of them have its own profile. As you can see we got a lot of features and settings here that controls how the butt kicker will react within the game and I have the settings activated that I think suits my system and holds some balance between the rumbling and small effects. Sim Commander can also control small programs or app that I want to auto start when firing up iRacing. This saves time and mouse clicks and it is a good help and after double clicking on my iRacing game profile my default web browser is open up automatically with iRacing.com as the address. Alongside that SimDash, Trading Paints and iSpeed are up and running and then manually I have to start the program SimRacing up and later on when iRacing is launched also Joel Real Timing Server and the included Electron program. These two programs cannot be auto started with Sim Commander as they are not purely XE files. When streaming, it is a must for me to run iRacing in windowed mode to be able to monitor the streaming software OBS and reading chat during gameplay. More of that later in the video. Running iRacing in window mode works fine and the performance in terms of overall smoothness and reducing graphic stutters are better than compared to running iRacing in full screen mode. Running iRacing in windowed mode is also the only way to have my Joel real timing overlay functioning and it is also very practical for easy access to other open program. As shown here I can for example on the fly make my force feedback settings with a program called IRFFB without messing with alt and tab out to window first. Moving on, these are my settings in OBS. I use display capture, have a webcam and chat, I use my 8 core Ryzen R7 1700 as my 264 decoder for my streams, I use CBR, my bitrate at 15,000, keyframe interval at 2, I use the preset very fast and profile is main. Same settings for local recordings and even if using my Nvidia graphics cards, NVENC decoder generally is a better choice for local recordings like this recording. I stick to using my CPU doing the workload here also. I just want it simple. Using NVENC as a decoder for streaming can work fine for some games as it is not stressing the CPU that much, but nevertheless not for racing games like iRacing as it can't cope with the fast moving objects on the screen and it become very blocky and pixelated. 
Another downside with using NVNC is that it requires higher bit rates to look good. That means it is not the best for streaming, as viewers can find the higher bitrate too demanding on their internet bandwidth and speed. I believe my bitrate setting to 15,000 is on the limit today and high enough. So, using the CPU to do the work of the stream is a better choice as the video quality is better at lower bitrates. Twitch is a great place for streaming, and I have used that before, but the bitrate limit there to 6000 is despite running the X264 decoder making the video quality suffer a lot, and YouTube have what I believe no limit at all, so I found after a while that streaming directly to YouTube is the easiest. I have tried services as Restream that can make one stream go to multiple platforms such as Twitch and YouTube and also Facebook and many more at the same time with different bitrates. And that service is working flawlessly so go check that out if you wanna go that direction. Back to the settings in OBS, the sounds are default, I stream at 60fps and 1080p and I use process priority to high here in OBS under the advanced tab and that settings are very important. And there are a lot of stuff that I could be talking about here but I leave it like this and these are the settings that I found is working best on my system in regards to the video quality of the stream and the in-game performance of iRacing. On my web browser and YouTube and the streaming tab I don't have much to do. Before I press start streaming in OBS and go live I just need to do some small things first. I check that the information are correct about what track I am at and what series and so on. The next step is to do a short video recording me standing in the pits during the race practice session. To do that I use the Sneep tool in Windows to make a screen capture from the video to be used as a picture thumbnail to the stream and later on after editing the picture in Photoshop also be the thumbnail to the whole video on YouTube when the stream is over. I have no interest of making the thumbnail to be a clickbait or overdoing the presentation of the whole video to make more viewers of it. It is just not me and I leave that to others. The iRacing logo and the NASCAR logo and also the track logo can be found on the internet and I use the PNG file so the background is transparent. Then I make a separate chat window that will be visible for me during the stream and I just copy the address of the window to the chat browser search setting in OBS so they are linked together. As I have the same server address and password stream after stream there are no changes needed and the password is the same in the OBS settings every time. Sometimes I check it anyway just to be sure. Before I launching the stream I changed the mode to studio in OBS so I got two preview windows and then I just choose and press the scenes to the left and make a transition to the right window that is the live stream. Then it's time to click on the start streaming button in OBS and I use shortcuts on my keyboard for muting the sounds for my mic and iRacing when playing the intro video for my channel. And shortly after that, when activated the sound again, I start talking in the video. I then check that the sound is off on the YouTube preview window and that the stream are healthy and then I minimize the YouTube screen. So here is how it looks like in my room when streaming. On my display to the right I got my YouTube chat window to the bottom left and beside that OBS is running and these two windows are the ones I got opened and monitoring during my streams. There I can reply to incoming chat messages and also watch out for stream with the dropped frames, muted audio and other stuff. Normally if things are good in the beginning of the stream it will stay the same to the end also. The only real issues I have experimented was uh, some frozen webcams in some videos in the past, some races with internet issues and me streaming in two high quality settings that caused stutters. 
My main webcam sits on the top of the center speaker and behind my seat is the green screen making the background of the webcam being transparent. The Joe Will Real Timing overlay both the timing table to the left of the middle monitor and the track map to the right are visible for me when driving compared to other overlays such as iRacing browser apps that are not. The only element on the stream that I can't see when racing is the webcam but I can monitor it in the OBS as it is shown there in the preview window. I don't want to complicate things in regards of the iRacing UI placement on the screen. These elements such as the black box, voice notification and other information can be moved around and changed. I have chosen to left things as default and on top of that added my Joel real timing overlays so that it is not interfering with each other. I have set the field of view so as much of the screen is visible and I am showing my in-game steering wheel so viewers can follow my steering inputs. After I press stop streaming in OBS and the stream ended and YouTube have transcoded the video I always change the thumbnail as I talked about earlier so the finished video will have the thumbnail with the logos and after that I sort the video to its right playlist category I add some tags and make it official and also sharing it on Facebook. Streaming on YouTube is not that difficult. Sure, it will take many hours in the beginning just dialing the different settings in correctly and testing the stuff. And after that also trusting that everything is working when you stream. But after that, when you're beginning to feel that all focus and concentration can be directly to the race itself and not the technical stuff in conjunction to the stream, then you reach that point it is a lot more fun and that keeps motivating you doing more and more live streams. As I stated in the beginning of the video, this is not the general in-depth tutorial or how to live stream, so I have chosen to leave out some steps and instructions that perhaps need some clarification. Feel free to comment below and I will give more information if needed. Ok, let's end this video by saying thanks for watching and as always see you in more iRacing related videos to come here on Front Seat Racing. Bye bye! Come on, come, come here, come, come here, come here, come, 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 come,